My soul finds rest in God alone. Only He can save me. Like a fortress, like a rock, He won't let me. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to our Mother of Sorrows. Let's stand and sing praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him for me. everybody and welcome all of you here tonight I want you to turn to each other and just say hello and welcome but I want you to tell the person next to you around you your favorite prayer beside the Our Father in the Hail Mary and the glory be I guess and the glory be so what's your favorite prayer besides those three tell the person around you what's your favorite prayer would you say that's, yeah, I know, but that's, that's, yeah, everybody says that, everybody says that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Didn't mean to stump you with that one, but uh, hopefully uh, we say some other prayers besides those three. And so, did anybody say something like, from my heart? Did anybody do that? Oh, oh cool, cool, very good, very good. So, uh, today's about prayer, obviously, and it is about the Our Father today as well. And so we'll talk about prayer. So I want you to listen as John reads, especially the first reading today. If you want to get a reading about a one way to pray, a real prayer petition, let's listen to what Abraham has to say and all that. So let's begin, though. About, let's, let's begin our prayer together. Let's ask God for his mercy. Together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's grab our programs together and let's sing our Gloria together as well. Thank you. 
pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as hold fast even now to those things that endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin is so grave, that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it, for you, for, far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, if I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, what if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, let, my, let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will, fare, I will fare, forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still, Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But still he persisted. Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, for the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all of my heart. 
for you have heard the words of my mouth and the presence of the angels. I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. In the sight of the angels I sing A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. Even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he was finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. Do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, suppose one of you had a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked. My children and I are already in bed. 
I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up and give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up and give them whenever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. The one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you will hand his son a snake if he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion if he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever wondered before why right as we begin the communion rite at Mass and right before we begin the Our Father, that we say at the Savior's command, formed by, I like that word, formed, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Now I would bet you if I asked you what is the prayer you probably say most often, probably almost all of you would say the Our Father. Probably if I asked you, was this, what was the prayer you learned first in your life? You probably would say something like, the Our Father. So the question is, what's so daring about it? We say it all the time. Why are we saying we dare to say? So allow me, if I may, for just a few moments here to try to share with you a couple thoughts, a couple observations of why I think it might be daring. First of all, I was saying, do we call God our Father? Our dad, dad. Now, Jesus called God his Father. Now, are we supposed to have the exact same relationship Jesus has with the Father? Are we supposed to be sons and daughters of the Father exactly the same way Jesus is a son of the Father? Are you and I supposed to be everything by adoption that Jesus is by nature? And I say all this about us calling God Father. In a world that we live in today where there is a great crisis of fatherhood in our world and in our civilization and our culture here today, uh, Samuel Osherson Osh wrote a book called Finding Our Fathers. In the book, he talked about men in general and fathers in particular. And in the book, he uh, shares a quote from Sherry Height, who said she interviewed over 7,200 men. And of all those men she interviewed, she said almost none of them, none of them had a close relationship with their father. He goes on to talk about uh, statistics by a, uh, Jack uh, Steinbach, who uh, uh, engaged this father-son relationship, and he went on to say that he found that fathers were physically absent 23% of the time. 29% had psychologically absent fathers who were too busy with work, uninterested in their sons, or passive at home. 18% had physically absent fathers who were austere, moralistic, and emotionally uninvolved. And 15% had fathers who were dangerous, frightening to their sons, and seemingly out of control. Only 15% showed evidence of, a father's, uh, of fathers appropriately involved with their sons with a history of nurturance, trustworthy warmth, and deep connection. And folks, I want to go on to say that probably it's true about spiritual fathers. First of all, I can't hear me. And then second of all, the place is going to blow down, you know, in, in a second. So they're even not supposed to say all this. But it also is true about us as my spouse, I'm a spiritual father. You, you call me father, and, and you do that because I'm supposed to be a transparency of God the Father, the same way Jesus, when he came down here, is meant to be a transparency of God the Father. And I wonder if all the statistics that I just shared with all of you are pretty much exactly the same for spiritual fathers as it is for biological fathers. 
there's a real big issue here with all this. And so uh, I, I realize all of my statistics I just shared with all of you have to do with, with, with uh, fathers with their sons. But I wonder if in one sense it also has to do with daughters with their fathers as well. And, and one, one uh, particular author went on to say, the shrinking of obligations in the role of fatherhood is one of the profound tragedies in our civilization. And I can't help but wonder, in, in, in one sense, is Jesus telling us to call God our Father? Is he trying to revive in our culture that, uh, an understanding of fatherhood that is nurturing, warm, trustworthy, and deeply connected to his sons and daughters. And in just a few moments, I'm going to talk to you about our, my casting a vision, which I, I, I shared with you a couple weeks ago. And I have to admit to you, in our adult formation that we're going to talk about in just a few moments here, one of the key persons we are trying to grapple with and, get it, and, and grab a hold of are fathers. Because we know that if we get a father's attention, if we get a father's heart, who really wants to be involved in faith formation in their lives, we get the whole family. We get the whole thing. If we get fathers to be involved, we get the sons, we get the daughters, we get the wives as well. And secondly, if I might say it this way, the second part of all this would be, uh, we dare to say, thy kingdom come. I will bet you that the most daring and dangerous words that we as a church could ever, ever say is thy kingdom come. I mean, in the Our Father, there's daily bread, there's heaven, there's forgiveness, lead us not into temptation, all of those are fine. But what about this idea of thy kingdom come? If we read the small print behind that one, thy kingdom come, thy justice come, Thy mercy come, thy peace come, thy economics come, thy politics come, thy kingdom come. And as one author goes on to say, um, and we are promised, if we, if we say that you're our father, we really mean it, we are promising to be co-conspirators with God in creating this kingdom right here and right now. It's hard to keep religion comfortable, safe, and private if we say our prayers, thy kingdom come, we will be thoroughly justified to skip that part of the Our Father if we're not serious about all of that. And then there's the author, and he goes on to say, does the kingdom of Jesus mesh with the kingdom that we are creating right here and right now? Now back um, in 2014, now, I was a priest at that point for over 30 years. I began to ask myself that question. Is what we are building here, what I'm trying to build as a priest on this earth, does that match up with the kingdom of Jesus Christ in this world too? So I go to a conference in Pittsburgh. I'm reading the book at the same time by Sherry Wiedel called Forming Intentional Disciples. And I go to the conference at the same time. And she goes on to say in that conference, which struck me deeply, and she had a bunch of other stuff that struck me deeply too, but she said this, she said that 6% of Catholics, 6% of Catholics have biblical faith. All other Catholics have something which she called various levels of pre-faith. Only 6% of Catholics have what she called biblical faith. So we began, one of the first things we did was the Alpha Course, which began to change everything around here. Our music, our hospitality, our outreach, religious education, evangelization, prayer, small groups, on and on it goes. And then we created a vision statement. What's the, the vision of us going forward? To be beacons of Christian life here in Johnstown, welcoming all, engaging all to be intentional disciples of Jesus Christ. Then we created a, a, a mission statement, which is how we're supposed to get there, compelled by the love of Christ, to love others, deepen our faith, transform our world. We started with a motto, which is still in the back of the church back there, says, Jesus, ignite me. And you should be proud, in one sense, of many of the different things that have happened 
in those since 2004 to those last eight years because some remarkable, wonderful things have occurred. What I'd like to do for just a moment, if I may, is talk to you about two things. I'd like to invite you to one. I want you to think seriously about the other. And the one I want to invite you to right now is our picnic, which is next week. And I want you to really, really come. You will be missed if you don't come. And I want you to come because you're a son and daughter of the Father. Every one of us here coming together as this parish family, as a son and daughter of the Father. And I'll bet you when you come, there are going to be a lot of people that you've never seen before that are part of this family too because they don't go to the 4 o'clock Mass. They may go to the 30 or the 11 o'clock. And so you're going to see a lot of different people. I want you to come because you're a son and daughter of the Father. And I want you also to consider, maybe in, if there's anybody that might be a little bit on the edge, about coming back to church in some fashion, would you consider inviting them to that? That's something they would come to first before they would come to something like this. But I want to invite you to the picnic. Now, second of all, I want you to be very, very, think about if, if, if the other thing is, if we have done some strides the last eight years of trying to become more and more what Jesus would want us to become, what's the next step for all of us? What should we be considering doing next? And so two weeks ago, I presented to you in the bulletin or a video online, this casting a vision forward. What is the next step you and I need to do if we claim to be disciples of Jesus Christ and thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven? And I share with you in that document, I wrote, can you imagine with me Hospitality everywhere, greeting people, serving coffee, a variety of forms, topics, classes for adults and for our children. Sunday mornings, the last available time left for Christians to be able to gather because the secular world has swallowed up everything else. Let's utilize every moment of Sunday morning for the faith formation of everyone, all of us, everyone here including our children coming together to learn about this faith of ours. If we really want our kingdom to come here and to pray about that. I'll talk more about that as things unfold, to pray about all that. And I'm going to talk more and more about the practical ways which we hope that begins to happen in the fall when we're going to begin to have faith formation seriously for absolutely everyone. Alex Carell, a Nobel Prize winning surgeon, summed up the power and the rule of prayer when he said this. Prayer is a mature activity. Mature activity indispensable for the fullest development of our personalities. For the fullest development of our personalities, we have to become a people of prayer. Only in prayer do we achieve that complete and harmonious assembly of body, mind, and spirit, which gives the frail human person unshakable strength unshakable strength to dare, to dare to call God our Father. Unshakable strength to dare to bring Jesus' kingdom down here on this earth, in this place of our mother's sorrows. And could you please stand and grab your programs once again as followers of Jesus. Let you and I profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father in the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Maybe the classic form of prayer petition is our first reading today with Abraham. So let's, let's join him in our prayers of petition here today. Our response is, Jesus, our guide, hear our prayer. For our church, that she will stand as a living witness to truth, freedom, peace, and justice, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus our, our guide, guide, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For elected officials and policymakers, May God grant them integrity in protecting all who are vulnerable, especially the poor, the elderly, and the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus our guide, hear our prayer. For our troubled world, especially in Ukraine and every place that has experienced senseless gun violence, that all divisions will be healed, violence will be banished, and the peace of God's kingdom will bless the earth. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our guide, hear our prayer. For all those trapped in sin or addiction, may they recognize God's presence and may God give them faith, hope, and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our guide, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Lord's faithfulness help us to persevere in prayer and trust in God to answer us in his time. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our guide, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that compelled by the love of Christ, we will love others, deepen our faith, and transform the world, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, our guide, hear our prayer. For Casey Eckenrod and Ashley Irwin, who were married here this weekend, may God give them divine assistance at all times. May they continue to receive support from family and friends, and may they reach out to share their love with others. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, our, our guide, God, hear our prayer. Let us pause now to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. And for the souls of the faithfully departed, especially Patricia Gallardi, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus our, our guide, God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let's pray our prayer uh, to protect all life together. Eternal Father, creator and sustainer of life, bless all of us with the courage to defend all life from conception to natural death. And those suffering from the devastation of war or gun violence, bless us with the strength to respect and welcome all peoples so that we may truly follow the call of Jesus to be a neighbor, a brother, and a sister. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Amen.
to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King And I will adore you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive this bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself to be born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rise from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we now acclaim.
by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and offer the brothers and sisters the sign of Christ's peace. Hi there, dear. So behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh. 
Let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son, Jesus, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us in our salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Could you be seated for just a moment, please? Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. Strong. 